right, so we are looking at the idea of a sequence diagram and sequencing for an app. Because when we have an actual application, we need to plan out how that app is going to, how it's going to work, how that app is going to execute. Because we're not simply just putting together, you know, this quick little blurb, say for example, like stupid project number three, where it literally just gets up and goes. And even in Monster, I had planned all that out for you, saying this is what the program's going to do, it's going to have that going on. But we need to actually have you guys have the ability to prepare and plan out your own applications. And so to do that, we're going to start talking about the sequence of an application. So what is the expected sequence of events? So the first thing we're going to have is our app is going to start. Right? And then eventually, is this not the most amazing sequence ever of an app? Is this pretty much every program on the planet? Yeah. Okay, so we've got this basic sequence going. Now, that's wonderful, that's lovely, but what we actually want to do is we want to plan out more along the lines of how that sequence should really work. And so as we are going to be doing, we're making a sequence for our chatbot. And so this is where I'm gonna need some of you guys to help out with this. And so when our chatbot starts, What should it do? input. Okay. <coughs> and then quit. No. If it quits, that, that's that's really fast. That's like less that's less than asked questions did. Okay, so we want we want to continually doing this say hello, prompt user but do this whole thing right here over and over again. Just so it says hello. Mm -hmm. Hello? 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 Oh wait, that sounds kind of weird. <laughs> okay, so recognize the input, use the input. So we have to recognize... Use input. And then what? Then quit? we need to keep talking. So this sequence right here needs to repeat it. So repeat doing this over and over again. And then eventually we want it to quit though, right? We want it to stop. So we do, we do need it to quit at some point. And then quit. So, like, so with a command. So it s starts off with hello, does some stuff for a bunch of times, and then we say goodbye, and it's over. Sound good? So we have our planned sequence of stuff. Now, this right here, we can do every single piece except for one is what we've used in Java. We haven't really covered the repeating statement thing over and over again. So we have to actually figure out how we're going to make it repeat. But before we do that, we want to make sure we have our framework built and ready to go. So we want to identify the components we're going to need and design those and think about the methods that are going to happen. Because methods are the actions that happen. And we can have actions happen multiple times with loops that we've already seen in App Inventor. But in order to do that with Java, we have to actually have those planned out a little bit in more advanced than we can simply do with App Inventor because we have to actually design our code and make sure
make sure it doesn't suck. So, again, it's that, that goal of having class not suck from, as our main goal in class. So, our actions that were happening, if we look at this list of things right here, which ones are actions? Saying hello isn't one. Recognizing using input is one. Is prompting user for input an action? Okay, how about quit? So in fact, all four of these chunks, hello, prompt, recognize, and use, and then quit are all methods that are gonna happen. So we're gonna need to have a set of methods that can do items over and over again, and then do things from that. Think back to what we did last time. We had some idea of like some things that we wanted our chatbot to actually do. There are some specific things we wanted chatbot to talk about. Those would be other things that would be part of our chatbot. They're separate from the prompt user for input and recognize that input. They're kind of in that, that recognize section. So we'd have to have it go and check this other chunk of actions. Does it match this, yes or no? Does it do this, yes or no? And then from that, use the input. So if it does recognize something, do something with it. If it doesn't, well, random topic time. Would you like to talk about George? I'm not sure, but we should talk about him some more, shouldn't we? I did too, his hair was quite nice. We should talk about his hair. So as you can see, we have that ability to, now, our chatbot is nowhere going to be as smart as Cleverbot. Cleverbot had hours and hours and hours and people and people and people working on it. We're going to have a fairly stupid bot. And that's okay. But we'll make it so that our stupid bot can keep you busy for a while. Fairlystupidbot.com. Okay, we, 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 we will we'll have to consider this. Um, <laughs> actually take that and make it into a Zork type game after that. Yeah. Yeah, because that's that's a couple things. So it actually makes it it would it would evaluate what you type in. If if it yeah you could do that and add some more features, yeah. That 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 requires a bit more logic behind the scenes. But yes, we could definitely move towards that. The first version though will be we have to, we have to work on how to get those streams processed. So the purpose of what we're doing is going to be actually string. So that's a good question. It was on the idea of can we use this to like make a game like a text-based game? And yes, there's some, there's some logic that goes behind that, some like decision making, some game logic skills. But yes, we can definitely do that. Yeah, yeah, we we could definitely make a text-based game, and we could definitely adapt this project after we get it started. To um, but the idea behind this is we need to learn how to use strings. Strings are a huge, huge part of computer science programming in general. And in fact, just computer science, when we're dealing with data, almost all the data that we use in the world is text. Yes, there are pictures out there on the web, and there's movies and, and stuff like that. But the data data, the stuff that scientists and people and businesses and individuals and game makers use all the time. Days is words. And we have to learn how to deal with words in computer speak. Because computers think words are just, oh, there's some symbols over here. That's, that's great. So we're going to be looking at how we can actually do some stuff with that.